Hello and welcome to Devils in the Dirt. This is the Battle of Mogadishu. The battle takes place in Somalia. Somalia is a country located on the Horn of Africa in Eastern Africa. Ethiopia lies to the west, Djibouti to the northwest, the Gulf of Aden to the north, and the Indian Ocean lies on the east. Mogadishu, about two thirds of the way down the Somali coast, is the capital. The current president is Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, and its currency is a Somali shilling. The Somali flag is a blue field with a white star. Currently, about 85% of the population is Bantu, and the other 15 are non Somalis, including around 30,000 Arabs. The official language is Somali, Arabic is also official, along with Italian and English. The major religion is Islam, which is made up predominantly of Sunni Muslims. The population of Somalia is about 10.5 million, compared to 94 million in Ethiopia, 44 million in Kenya, and about 38 million in Sudan. Mogadishu is the capital of Somalia and is a port town on the Indian Ocean. It's known locally as Hamar. In 1892, it was leased to Italy and later bought by Italy in 1905, becoming the capital of the Italian Somaliland. On June 1, 1960, Mogadishu became the capital of a combined territory consisting of the former British and Italian territories. Currently, the population of Mogadishu is about 1.4 million people. The weather in Mogadishu is, throughout the year, very warm and very hot. The battle takes place in October, which you can see is one of the cooler parts of the year. However, cool is a relative term here, and it still is around 32 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. At the time of the battle, what was going on was there was a humanitarian crisis in Somalia, and the U.S. was leading a U.N.-backed intervention force. Their mandate was to stabilize the country and to support a federalist government. The people of Somalia were caught in the middle of this civil war, and many of the rival clans were vying for supremacy in the capital and in the lands outside of Mogadishu and in the country. On June 5, 1993, a Pakistani weapons inspection team was ambushed, and many of them were killed. The UN responded with Resolution 837, which involved the taking of all necessary measures against those responsible for the armed attacks and to establish the effective authority of UNISOM-2 throughout Somalia. UNISOM-2 was a continuation of the UN effort in Somalia to uh, conduct country building and restabilization and to try to improve the humanitarian crisis and the uh, security situation in the country. The man that was ultimately held responsible for the ambush on the Pakistani weapons team was the former Somali National Army General Muhammad Farrar Adid. Muhammad Farrar Adid was a Somali warlord and politician. He had been a part of the previous regime under Saeed Bar, but was later pushed out. The Habergadir clan opposed the U.S. and U.N. intervention in Somalia and used propaganda and violence to further their cause. During the UNISOM-2 phase, the UN had initiated a disarmament program. This would eventually be one of the major catalysts for the events preceding the Battle of Mogadishu, namely the ambushing of UN Pakistani forces on June 5th. The day after this, a bounty of $25,000 was placed on Adid's head and UNISOM forces were tasked with bringing him and his followers to justice. Power in Somalia is often found at the end of a shilling or the muzzle of an AK-47. However, it also resides in the many clans. These clans are factious and are often at odds with each other and with outsiders. The deep history of the clans and the murky and muddled ways in which they are tied to each other creates a rich tapestry on which the battle takes place. The pink areas of the map represent the Hawiye clan, which is the parent clan of Mohammed Farrar Idid's Javier Gadir. The Javier Gadir, their main rival at the time of the battle, was the Darod, from which came the former president Saeed Bar. As the political situation and stability of the country deteriorated, the clans warred with each other for supremacy over the capital. Entering into this situation was the UN and its Western allies. 
Their attempts at consensus building did not fare well, and a similar panel parallel can be found in the recent conflicts of Afghanistan and Iraq. The American forces were in many ways similar to the sword of Alexander when confronted with the Gordian knot. However, in such conflicts, there is no easy solution, and the degrading of one clan's power would only lead to another becoming resurgent. Also to note is the Kizmayo region on the southern shore. This location would eventually house Idid's lieutenants in a temporary jail. Muhammad Farrar Idid, aka the Lion of Africa, was a Somali general. He was born in December 15, 1934, later died August 1, 1996. He was born in Beladwane, uh, Somalia, to the Habergadir clan. He was educated in Rome and Moscow, later becoming part of the Italian colonial police. He then studied at the Frunze Military Academy in the USSR, and in 1969, President Ali Shamarki was assassinated. This then led to the events that allowed Saeed Barr to take over and form a new government. During the time this was taking place, Idid was the intelligence chief under Ali Shamarki and then fell out of favor with Saeed Barr and was jailed for about six years. Later, he rejoined Saeed Barr's cabinet and eventually returned as the uh, intelligence chief. In 1977 to 1989, he participated in the war with e Ethiopia. Later, he became the Somali ambassador to India, and in 1991, Said Barr's government collapsed. This is then when uh, Muhammad Farah Adid began fighting for control of the capital of Somalia, Mogadishu, which is where the battle takes place, after the Somali National Army was disbanded. In 1991, Saeed Barr's government collapsed and Muhammad Farrar Idid began fighting for control of the capital after the Somali National Army was disbanded. This is around the same time when Unisom 1 began in Somalia, which had the aim of bringing stability back to the country. And in 1993, Idid was identified as a primary target for U.S. actions by a task force ranger. And this is when the... Uh, main actions by the U.S. started taking place against his uh, command structure and eventually led to the Battle of Mogadishu where two of his lieutenants and less notables uh, in the staff were captured. In 1995, in June, Adi declared himself president of Somalia and then later died of a heart attack following a gun battle in 1996. Here we have four of Mohammed Farrar Adid's lieutenants. The two men pictured below are Abdukubid Hassan Awali, the interior minister to Muhammad Farrar Adid, who was not captured at the time of the Battle of Mogadishu, and who had survived a previous raid on a large gathering of the Habergadir, and Osman Hassan Ali Otto, the financier to Muhammad Farrar Adid, who was captured on September 21st, 1993. The top two were the main targets of the October 3rd raid in downtown uh, Mogadishu, and they were in the Target building next to the Olympic Hotel. I was unable to find a picture of Muhammad Hassan Awale, and so I have put a blank in its place. In August 1993, Secretary of Defense Les Aspen authorized the deployment of Special Operations Forces to Mogadishu, Somalia. This was due to an increase of enemy attacks on U.S. and UNISOM forces and installations. This task force had the mission to capture General Muhammad Farrar Idid and others and to turn captives over to the UNISOM forces. In August and September of 1993, Task Force Ranger conducted six missions in Mogadishu. The 10th Mountain Division worked for over 15 months in Somalia, rotating through deployment and assisting the relief effort. Their mission was to secure major cities and roads and to provide safe passage of relief supplies to the Somali population. They operated in a spectrum that consisted of aiding locals one day to being engaged in combat the next. Due to their efforts, humanitarian agencies declared an end to the food emergency and there was a decrease in factional fighting. The 10th Mountain Division were the backbone of the quick reaction force that attempted to assist Task Force Ranger during the Battle of Mogadishu.